time for everything. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. so it's late, but we can see my hands. And uh, this entire song that we're playing, what he was actually doing was this thing where he's going and going up to this high stuff. So we decided, man, your ear was already like, no, I don't really want to do that. So we're going to go on every one of the first notes. So, you know, whether we're going or those are our first two phrasings. So just work on those two first ones. So nothing changed about it except we're going ba boom, which we said just want to go any two fingers, not ba boom. Um, cool. So there's us, part one. Or, or excuse me. Cool. Second part of the phrasing is the same either way. Without any clicks or anything, we're going E, G, E. And this is the same G where when you were playing it, you were going up to here for it. Um, so yeah, just... And do not use your pinky. Um, we're in a, you know, like I'm saying, when we're in a two fret spread, you want to use your ring finger unless there's some compelling reason to not use it. Like when we're doing this... That would be okay to use your pinky because you're about to go right to there. Um, but here we're just... Um, and it's your thumb position pulling it back that makes it feel like a reach. So we did that. I'm going to put four fingers over four frets, and then you can just kind of comfortably take your pinky away and play from there. If we had to pick one thumb position, that would be it. But either way, we want it just to not feel like a reach to play those three fingers. And that's something to just mess around with. Maybe stop your video right now and just be like, just kind of looking up, not being tempted to use your right finger there without worrying about rhythm or anything like that. Just five, seven, five, seven, or three, five, three, five. Um, cool. So there was our little time. Out. We've just been going, or excuse me, now we're going to go, so the, the line he did was, and we're going to go quick play, play, quick play, there we are, so that's, And the click, like we're saying, is I'm touching the string, ready to push down, not off it, not on it. So there we go. So we have... Er, there's the first one. And then we go... Or rather... Like hey, play your play the bass line the way I wrote it, which is mm -hmm. not entirely unlikely. You're gonna we decide you could kind of do it up here. And strange as that sounds on its own, that's what he's doing. It's and if we were gonna do that, we could still go. It just kind of it's sort of, you know makes so there we see when we're playing yeah. in a lower octave, we can totally go in a way where we're that we couldn't up there. So yeah, getting really good at that bass line is mostly what we're doing. And otherwise, we talked about kind of the geography test um, concept with uh, just deciding that you know B and E at the 7th fret and C and F. Like, it has nothing to do with bass playing whatsoever. Tendency is people learn E and F by accident, G and C by accident. A and D by accident, and then turn learning these four notes into way more hefty a task than it is. It's the same amount of data as these are the names of the open strings, or these are my four friends, or this is the country base, and these are the cities of. So we've been doing stuff like this since kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And so just kind of fight the reflex to one it turned into, but how will I apply it? And right now we're just going, hey, this one's B. This one's E, this one's C, this one's F. And then the key step is where you kind of quiz yourself on it. Like it's a geography test. Just be like, where was B? Where was F? 
notice which ones you're forgetting, go straight at those. Um, and, you know, learning the names of four notes really quick. It just seemed like it was going to go, I'll know this is A, so I'll figure out where B is, and then I'll know C is here. Learning these four note names is going to open up so much more, because, I mean, we just do so huge a percentage of our stuff at eighth fret and beneath. Um, you know, and hey, here, so that's where we got to. If you want to have a little additional asterisk bonus footage then, it would be that the 10th fret, it's D and G, D and G. And here's a perfect representation of how our brains work. If I gave you all six of those at once, it would take way more time than getting those first four down and then adding two more. Um, you know, and that's just, again, it's just like muscle memory stuff that's totally not intuitive because we could memorize six dots if we needed to. But then you're the guy who can go B and E, C and F, D and G, and you have to think about B and E, C and F to be allowed to think about D subconsciously. Um, anyway, so if you want to add the 10th fret, go for it. It's D, G, and uh, and then of course the instrument starts over at the 12th fret. So it's a, you know, but anyway, that's bonus footage. You know, B and E, C and F, and there we are. You've been bass lessoned. Um,